Thank you, Brian, for that. Now, turning to our next installment of Yahoo Finance's week-long healthcare special, we're looking into the future impact of AI. It's no secret the AI boom has taken the tech world by storm, but it is actually not a new phen phenomenon in healthcare. Just how far it will go in the industry remains a question. According to a recent Deloitte survey, slightly more than 70% of generative AI users thought the tech could revolutionize care delivery. And here to dive into the use of AI in healthcare, we have Dr. Geetha Nair, former Salesforce chief medical officer and author of Dead Wrong, Diagnosing and Treating Healthcare's Misinformation Illness. Keitha, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Anjali. So let's talk about this. AI in healthcare, not a new phenomenon, definitely been sort of functioning in the background, if you will, especially when we talk about drug use and development. But in the provider space, that's something that is holding a lot of excitement, if you will. There's a lot of people who want to know is Dr. Ghoul walking into the room now? Are we going to be diagnosed by, by AI? What do you have to say to that? Well, first of all, as a technologist, I am thrilled and excited by the opportunities of AI, particularly in precision medicine and personalized medicine. As a physician, however, I am concerned about the implementation of AI. Just like we've done with so much tech, we've in many ways taken away the joy of medicine. So it's important that we focus this new tech on the protection of the patient-physician relationship and ensure that we're actually making our doctors faster, better, and, and happier, frankly. I know I've seen surveys, and I know you've seen this too, where AI is supposed to sort of open that door, if you will, for uh, more administrative tasks being handled by that. We've seen the launch of a number of AI scribes by big tech firms in the last couple of months alone. I wonder, when it comes to that part of it, of you know what it means to gain that time back for the providers, <clears throat> what does that do then? What is, what is the underlying benefit to having those key technology Im Im impacted? Well, look, time is priceless. And right now, when we talk about documentation for physicians and the technology revolution that's happened, it's taken away time. And it's taken away the joy of medicine, which is really the patient-physician relationship. So the companies that focus on the use of AI as it relates to clinical decision support, improved and automated documentation, Prior authorization alone could save us billions and billions of dollars, and there is no doctor that enjoys doing prior authorization, let me tell you. So there's ample low-hanging fruit, but this idea that we're gonna go to Dr. Google, Dr. Google or a robot is gonna deliver your baby, patients don't want that, consumers don't want that, and neither do docs. Speaking of prior auth, I know there's another area where AI has been thought to be used, and that is actually in claims and denials or approvals of that within the healthcare insurance space. Now, United Healthcare recently in the headlines for some unfair denials causing a lot of problems for seniors. I wonder, is that an example of what you think is sort of where we can't get to just yet? Is it too early for something like that, or should that not be done at all? So again, we have to balance the buzz with reality. And AI is not ready to be left alone. We still need that human oversight, whether we're talking about prior auth or we're talking about documentation. So we're just not there yet because we're still learning. But secondly, we have to remember the healthcare industry is single-handedly keeping the fax machine alive. <laughs> So while AI not a is, joke, <laughs> not a joke, it's true. True, true. Walk into any doctor's <laughs> office and you'll, you'll meet that reality. So we have to balance what's possible and the art of what is possible with the reality. And we need to focus on the, the crawl, walk, run, right? When you're learning something, you don't go having robots doing surgery autonomously. Not yet. I hope we get there, but we're just not there yet. And a final question for you, when we talk about AI, of course, misinformation is something you recently wrote about in your book. Um, where do you think the, the role of that is? Where, where we talk about you know, what the trust, that underlying trust you were talking about with providers, how, what does that disconnect when AI comes in the picture? So first of all, 57% of Americans trust their doctor, not their insurance company, not AI, not, not hospitals, right? So we have to focus on how can AI amplify that trusted relationship. And we have to remember that 59 million Americans turn to social media influencers for answers to their healthcare questions. So why not use AI to amplify that trust, to amplify the presence of science and to win that trust back? Because there are just, there are just as many misfits out there using it to, to sell 29.99 vitamins, right? And supplements. So we need to flip the, the dynamic and science needs a comeback and AI could be part of that story.